At the Riyadh Elite Marathon, I saw something that was pretty crazy. During this race, we had around 10 to 20 elite men and women who had entered this race for a chance to win the $200,000 prize list. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the smaller marathons from around the world where there is not so many people taking part, but for the amount of money they were offering, this still meant that there were a lot of pro runners waiting to win that money. So right off from the beginning, some athletes went sprinting straight to the front. This was a mixed race where the men and women were set off at the same time, and I believe there were also pacers in this marathon race. So as always, the runners are pacing themselves, and they're quite lucky that the weather was not hot. As you can see here, there is thick cloud cover protecting them from the beaming heat of the sun. However, that does not save them from the humidity. A lot of these athletes had to buy their time. They had to wait to see how fast the pace was actually going to be. Now there's a couple athletes we need to pay attention to in this race. One is Keegan of Kenya and the other is Washahun of Ethiopia. I apologize if I pronounced the name wrong, but these were the two favorites in this race with personal records of under two hours and 10 minutes. So the 5k wasn't that fast and the Pacers were seeming to be doing a pretty good job because if it was any faster, the field wouldn't have been able to keep up with the Pacers. A lot of these athletes have gone out way too fast and over seven athletes ended up DNFing which basically means did not finish. They went out so fast that they were unable to finish the entire race. As you can see here, we're around 10k into the race and already the group of around 15 runners has been whittled down to only 7 or 8 where the rest of the athletes were being dropped off the back because they were too slow. This was kind of worrying and the event organizers started to think that this was going to turn up to a burn up, which in other words means that they are going to start running very fast over the second half, as some of these athletes here looked very comfortable running this pace. One was Washashun and also Keegan of Kenya. Keegan of Kenya was buying his time. He really was running a fantastic race. He looked extremely relaxed and he looked as if his eyes were on that prize money. He really, really was pushing the pace on. And here you can see one of the pacers in the orange vest trying everything he can to maintain a good pace until around the halfway mark. So the half marathon is halfway and we need to see what their split is in order to gauge how fast they're actually going. However, if you notice the guy in the orange vest, he is a pacer and he is actually struggling very, very much. When the camera zoomed in, he was in a lot of pain. He seemed to be pulling some very distressed facial expressions while the elite runners behind him looked very relaxed and composed even with this fast pace. When you're at this stage in a marathon, anything can happen. The race has only just begun at the halfway mark and as you can see here, the original group was probably like 20 runners. And right now we're looking at around about five minus the pacer. So probably about four, four athletes, unless one's hiding behind there. We have Keegan of Kenya running very, very strong. And overall, I would say that the pacers, who were the two guys at the front, are about to drop out very, very soon. So here we go. Now with the pacers having stepped aside, they've run the halfway mark. We now have Keegan looking very relaxed and one other Ethiopian at the front. Now as the cameras pan back, there were only two athletes with one pacer remaining. This ladies and gentlemen was Ethiopia versus Kenya, who was going to take the prize money? Well, stay tuned to see. Also if you're new on this channel, click the red subscribe button down below to stay up to date with all of the races around the world and leave a like on today's video for good luck. When the pacer finally stepped aside, it was Keegan versus the Ethiopian. Oh boy, were things looking good. Gashahun was trying everything he could to break down Keegan of Kenya, 
but it wasn't working. They still had over half an hour of running remaining, so these athletes had to buy their time and stay as comfortable as they possibly could. Either Wasserschen or Keegan were going to end up bonking or hitting the wall. Keegan was the one giving all of the attacks by trying to surge the pace on and doing mini sprints in between the 30k to 35k mark. This was pretty gutsy running and if you look at the road behind you can't see anyone. That's just a random walker who isn't part of the race, important note. Here's Keegan pushing away again at the 1 hour 40 minute mark and I was starting to think that maybe Keegan would win the race and begin to drop the Ethiopian. So I wanted to give a slow-mo to give you guys a perspective of this part of the race. Watch Keegan's stride compared to the Ethiopians. Look at this. Every single step, he is gaining away from the Ethiopian and creating a large gap between himself and second place. This was a dominant move, which in my eyes, I thought Keegan was now going to win the hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of prize money. But remember, there was still a long way left to go, well over 5 kilometers. Uh, I think around 7 kilometers still left until the finish. So we can't count out the Ethiopians because look at this, he caught back up to him. At the 35k mark, the Ethiopian had caught up to Keegan and Keegan was grimacing in pain. He was struggling with every single step knowing that he hadn't managed to break the Ethiopian quite yet. This race was getting more and more exciting as the cameras panned back round, it was 2 hours on the clock and Keegan unleashed another brutal sprint finish. Look at this, his arms are relaxed, his fists are open and he is sprinting for the finish line. Ladies and gentlemen, this is nothing but pure pain going through Keegan's body right now. He is trying everything he can to get to that finish line before the Ethiopian and secure himself with the win of this marathon. He could hear the crowd, he could sense the finish and he came through to win that prize money in a time of just over 2 hours and 8 minutes. Here is the Ethiopian who finished in 2nd place. He was extremely happy with his 2nd place finish, also gaining him quite a considerable amount of prize money which was well deserved in my opinion. The coverage of this race was extremely good and I have to say that it's up there with some of the other world class marathon coverages I have watched over the years. These races enable semi pro and lower level pro athletes to win money and earn a living. It's so important we support these types of races, otherwise there will be an even bigger gap between the Kipchogis and the club runners of our generation. Think about it guys, if these runners who are running 208 marathons are not being paid at all, then there will not be as many elite runners. This means that because the standard continues to go up every year, eventually there will be lots of people running sub 205, barely any people running 205 to 215 and then a whole bunch of guys running 220 to 230 who aren't being paid but just run at a club level for competition or to keep fit as a hobby. I believe if these types of marathons aren't put on regularly then we will see the competition start to fail and we will struggle to see the next greats of a generation. Put it this way, every great is once a semi-pro runner who hasn't quite become a king yet. In other words, these athletes must still earn a living while they're trying to have their breakthrough and running a 208 marathon is still an elite level marathon for a male. But with the female marathon world record now being something stupidly fast, like 2 hours 11 minutes, I've lost track it keeps getting so fast, it's starting to make me believe that the standards are going to go up again, meaning that it will be very difficult to earn a living even if you're running a 210 marathon as a man. This is very very worrying for our sport and I believe the races like the races I covered today 
are so vital for the future of our semi-pro and lower level professional athletes. This race was a good opportunity for the athletes to win prize money and it was also a good opportunity for the athletes to see where their fitness is early on in the season. There's another thing that's quite important to note which I did mention earlier which is that around 6 or 7 athletes DNF'd. Now the reason for this is because a lot of these athletes will see that they have been dropped and they will know that there's no point in finishing the race because they won't get very much prize money. Now most marathon organisers will give prize money all the way down until around about 12th to 15th place. Some do go further, I believe Boston goes all the way till 20th place and I also believe London may go till around 18th place or 16th place. But each time you go down the prize money gets less. For example, first place at London Marathon may earn £300,000, second place will earn £100,000, third place will earn £80,000, fourth will earn £40,000 and then eventually it will get to the point where 15th will only win about £1,000, maybe £2,000 at most. This enables the organisers to be fair and spread out the prize money meaning that even if you come 15th you're still going to earn some prize money and it's going to make it worth it. At this marathon today I think that they may have a cut off after the top 15 for prize money and that is why the other athletes didn't bother to even finish the marathon because it would have been more mileage on their legs when they wouldn't have won any money whatsoever. It's important to note though that these marathon organisers do support the pros very well, they give them free accommodation, they usually pay for free hotels, free meals, free food, free flights and travel and this is because the Kenyans and Ethiopians and pro runners are very important and an integral part of their race. They are the elite runners who are the fastest in the world and they will make their event look good, very organised and of course high level which is good at attending and getting the attention of other pro runners making their event more popular. I've covered this race today to share the event and help the popularity grow so make sure you go and subscribe to the channels that film these races and also leave a like on my video today and hit subscribe to join my channel as I will be covering a whole bunch more races coming up here on this channel. We have the RAK Half Marathon coming up very soon in a matter of days so subscribe if you want to see that. We also have a big marathon coming up soon also and some 5k road races that I'll be covering here on this channel. So guys I hope your training is going well. Leave a like on today's video and subscribe if you're new. I hope you're all doing well and I'll catch you in tomorrow's video. Peace out.